learning Rabbi Isai, so we'll start with the kasha that the Eiliger Ramah writes in Tshuvas. Wow. The Ramah has a kasha in Tshuvas as follows. Where well, the Ramah wants to know, imagine if Rachman al a young child, a very young child, passes away, Rachman al So the Ramah wants to know, does such a child have a chilek in Olam Haba? Does a child who was never zoicha to really do any mitzvahs, never got to bar mitzvah, never got to bas mitzvah. Does this child have a schus in Olam Haba? That is the kasha that the Ramah asks. And the Ramah answers as follows. The Ramah brings a tona devei Rav Meir. The tona devei Rav Meir in Sanhedrin daf kuf yudomid base asks as follows. How do we know? Ask the tona devei Rav Meir. That a young child has a chalik in Olam Abba, says the Tana Devei Reb Meir, and he quotes, and we'll quote the Zoya very soon, because it says, open up the gates for those that answered Amen. As I state, says the Ramah in Shuvas, based on that, every parent must make sure to train their child to answer Amen from a very young age because as soon as the child answers Amen that's when they get a chilek in Olam Haba. The boy said, what is this Amen? What is so great about Amen that it opens up the gates, gives Olam Haba to a child that hasn't even said anything, can barely say the word Amen, and yet you find people in shul I don't know if you ever noticed this. Maybe we dove in different shuls. But sometimes you notice, you know, the chazan is saying, even birchas hashachar in the morning, right? The list of brachas. It's like silence. You don't hear anything. Or maybe even, maybe even chazaras hashats. You imagine? Chazaras hashats. The chazan is belting out the brachas. Kavaldik. And the oilam, quiet. It's silence, like a library. It's quiet. No one says a word. Why is the oilam not saying amen? What's this Amin business? Let's have a look. Rabbi Yisrael, let's spend a few minutes in understanding something that opened up the gates of Oil and Mabo. So the Gemara tells us in Yuma Daf Lamed Zayin, brings a posik in Duvorim Perek Lamed Gimel. Ki Shem Hashem Ekro Hovu Goidel Lelokeinu. This is the Makar. Tells us Chazal, again this is a posik, when I pronounce the name of Hashem, glorify Hashem. That's the Pesach in Devarim. Says the Gemara in Yuma Daf Lamed Zayin, Chazal understand from those words that a person has a chiv, an obligation, to answer Amen after hearing a bracha. And the Gemara tells us that Moshe Rabbeinu said to Klal Yisrael, Ki shem Hashem ekra, when I mention Hashem's name, Glorify Hashem, which means that when you hear a bracha, you have an absolute obligation to respond. As well as the Psak, in the Mishtabura, in the Rechaim, Semen Reish, Tes Vov. Now, Rabbi Nebuchaya, Parashat B'Shalach, brings down that Chazal, in this Gevaldiga Mitzvah of answering on a bracha and saying Amen, it's an expression of Emuna, Because Emuna is fundamental to the entire Torah. However, it's not enough just to say Amen. You can't just say Amen. You have to say and understand what you are saying. The Gemara in Shabbos, that Kuf Yutas tells us, Omar Reish Lakish, Rabbi Yisrael, listen to this. Gemara Shabbos, look it up, Kuf Yutas HaMabes. Omar Reish Lakish, Kola Oina Amen Bechol Koychai. You've seen this sometimes in the shuls. Anyone that answers Amen Bechol Koychai doesn't necessarily mean with the loudest voice possible. But with all of his strength, with all of his understanding, with all of the intention, with all of the kavoda. They open up the gates of Ganeden by answering Omein Bechol Koichai. Reish Lakish tells us that you answer Omein properly, the gates of Ganeden are open. That means Omein can't just be said, it has to be understood and then said. Now it's interesting, what, what exactly does it mean? What exactly does it mean when a person is saying Amen? Let's understand that. What's the main kavana a person should have when he answers Amen? Is that whatever is said in the bracha is true. Someone is saying, Boire Perihoites, and I'm saying Amen 
that it is true that the Rabbani Shalom created everything, including this apple, and everything grew from the ground, and everything grew from the tree, whatever it may be, and therefore it's as if you said it yourself. The post can tell us, the Bach, for example, says this clearly, that uh, Amen can also be a tefillah. It's actually davening every time you say Amen. Says the Bach, because you're basically saying, may it be your will, Hashem, to fulfill the above request. The Gemara Shabbos Kufi explains to us what is the word Amen, where does it come from? Aleph, Mem, Nun, where does it come from? So it comes from Kael, Melech, Nehmon. Okay, God the faithful king, and therefore tells us Toysfus, over there in Shabbos Kufi Tes, Toysfus says that when a person says Amen, he should contemplate that the Rabboni Shalom is the Melech, Malch, Amlochem, the faithful king. And therefore a person should have at least that kavon in mind, when he says the Amen. The Gemara in Brochus, Tafnun Gimel Amabes. The Gemara says, God Allah, Oina Amen, Yosem and Amabarech. Listen to that, Rabbi Isai. The Gemara says, You say Amen, you're greater than the guy that made the Brocha. God Allah, Oina Amen, Yosem and Amabarech. What's the Pshat? Why? Why is it that I say Amen, I'm greater than the guy making the Brocha? So Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar once again explains that we know in Halacha there has to be two Adim. Whenever there's going to be Adis, whenever testimony has to be given, we need to aid him. Therefore, says Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, when a person says a bracha, so he says, He's one aid. One aid is not sufficient. You need to aid him. Says Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, when you say Amen, you have now completed the two aid him. And now there are two aid him giving aidus about the Rabbi Nishalaylam, which is basically why his bracha can become valid, which is why God la oin amen, yaisam an avarich. Says Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar, the reason why answer amen is greater than the bracha is you're making the edus hal. Without you, there's no edus. And therefore, we need your edus in that case. Which is why it's very important for a person to realize that. By the way, there's a modic as fasemis. There's fasemis as a different mahalach also. The Sfasemes, I'm not going to go into the Rikas now, but the Sfasemes says the reason why God lo in Amen Yosem and Amavoyek, what's the reason why Ansu Amen is greater than the one that makes the Brocha? It's because the one that makes the Brocha is Chotch getting Hano. <laughs> He's eating the apple. He's eating the cucumber. So He's getting Hano from it. I'm Ansu Amen, I'm not even getting Hano. So that's greater. I'm saying something without getting any Hano. So the Sfasemes, that's the reason why the Gemara tells us in Brochas why it's greater to make the Amen in that case. Okay, as I stated in the Sfasemes, my boy says, I'm murdered in the Levush. In the end of Urchaim in the Lavush, unbelievable Maisa. Listen to this Maisa. It's a Maisa Noira about what we're dealing with. Ramad Chayafa, the Lavush, was offered to be the Av Bastin of Pazna. Now, Ramad Chayafa, the Lavush, was, was, was a Boki. In Nigle, Niste, was a Tzadik, Yisoyed Oilam. He was unbelievable Yid. Unbelievable Boki, Bechala Terukula. And he was offered to be Av Bastin in what was known to be a very prestigious community. And he accepted the job. But he said, I have a problem that I don't yet know one chilek in halacha. And then I saw something with the sun, with the moons, calculating the uba, agansa, something very specific he had to learn before he took that position. So it's all put down the levush. You look at the end of Rechaim. Anyway, so he says over there that he traveled to some of the svadim who were bekiim in this specific halacha, in this chilek of halacha. And he went to the Maria Buav and he went there to learn the halachas. There was a five-year-old child at the time when he was learning the halachas that made a bracha on an apple. Made a boy braids on an apple. And the oil of the main, the lavush. And it wasn't concentrating, whatever it was. Didn't think about it too much, didn't answer me. He just didn't answer me on the five-year-old child's bracha on boy braids. The Maria Abu, who was teaching him the halachas, got very, very upset with him. He put him into Chayrim for 30 days. And the lavush had to come begging Please, please, for Mechila, Mechila, Mechila. I said, what did I do so wrong? You put me in Chayrim. For, like, hello, you know what Chayrim means in those days? No one can talk to you, no, Ali is Gunish. Like, well, what did I do? Which Avera that I did? So, Mary Abu have told him, you should know, I love you with all my heart. But Abba Shleim, I love you more than my children. But you should know that you were Chayv Misa in a Shomayim when you didn't answer Amen on that brach of a child. So therefore, I'm being Moichel you with the condition that wherever you go, Tell the Rabbonim, tell the Olam, tell the communities that you go to that if someone doesn't answer Amen to any bracha, any yid, even a child, it's the most terrible Aveira. And that's why the Lavush included it in his Sefer over there. Tell the Olam a chassidah shemaisa with Reb Chaim Veloshin. Okay, Reb Chaim chassidah shemaisa with Reb Chaim Veloshin. This is the Maisa, they, they say. That one time, 
Now, by the way, Reb Chaim Velozhin had a minig that he never said a bracha without someone being there to answer Amen. He had a Kabbalah. I'm not making a bracha. If there's no one around, I don't make the bracha because no one can answer Amen. So he was mucked to make sure there was always someone there who was going to answer Amen. One time, it was late at night, he was learning, he wanted to answer Amen. No one around. So he was quite thirsty, really wanted to drink something. It's late at night. All of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. And it's one of the, it's one of the Tamidim, whatever it was. Oh, Gavaldi, perfect timing. Rabbi came to ask a shout perfect timing. Wait a second, he brought his tea over. He made a shahakal. The Hamad answered Amen. He asked him a kasha, he answered him. Shkayach, shalom alisom. The next morning, Chaim Velozhin comes over to the Talmud and said, I want to thank you so much. Like your mama should say, I was so thirsty. Your mama saved me. The Talmud said, Rabbi, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, no, no, last night you came over to me. The Talmud said, I never came to you. I wasn't, I was sleeping the whole night. I never had such a shayla. I don't know what such a shayla exists, but I never came to you. So Chaim says, what that means, if a malach can answer amen to amen, that's what he has. There's a story that's brought down from a lady here in Yerushalayim that also had a similar Kabbalah. She did not make a bracha without, without someone to answer. She had kids around the house, it wasn't a big deal. She always had someone to answer. I mean, one time, most of the kids were at the house, except one of the little kids, one of the kids, one of the toddlers was, was, was around, and she was looking. She needed someone to answer. I mean. So she runs all over the house, and she finds the child was out the window, barely holding on to one of the bars. We know one of the bars, when, when, or like it is now, covering the whole window, but it was literally like the child could have fallen out. And she said, there's no question, if I wouldn't have had that Kabbalah, if I wouldn't have had that Hanhaga, I never would have looked for the child, I would have made my bracha, and who knows what would be for the child. But because she was makbid on Amin, that's what happened over there. There's a Moda Gishari Tshuva, Rabbi Yisrael, or Chaim Simon Vov. You look the Shari Tshuva up, it's unreal. The Shari Tshuva brings Rabbi Nachan Mazaria, that says, those people that say Bircha Sashachar in the morning, one after the other, so that people can answer Amen are acting in the right way. Why? Because it allows each of them to be a tzaddik gomo. What does that mean? A tzaddik gomo just by answering Amen? So the Shavit Shuva answers, and you look this one up in Simon Vov. He says the idea of answering Amen will make a person but tzaddik gomo is based on a Zoya Kodesh. That the Zoya Kodesh teaches us that the Lady Tzadi stands for anyone that recites 90 Amens every single day. There's an Indian to say 90 Amens every single day. And perhaps the reason is because when you say Amen, as we said for Rabbi Bachaya, it strengthens their Muna. Strengthens their Muna that the Rabbi Nishram creates everything. And therefore, when a person has a moon in the Rabbi Nishon, he can become a tzaddik. Rabbi Yisrael, I want to end with a Zoya and a Maisa. The Zoya tells us like this, and again, I mentioned it right in the beginning, the Shla Kodesh brings it in Inyone Tfila. He brings the Loshan of the Zoya Kodesh. Rabbi Yisrael, listen to this Loshan of the Zoya Kodesh. The Zoya tells us, he can open up every gate, says the Loshan. Again, I quote to the Shla Kodesh, in Inyone Tfila brings the Zoya Kodesh. Umi, shemachavin lechol bracha u bracha. Someone that concentrates on the word of every bracha that he hears from someone who's making the bracha. And he answers Amen with Kavana and Kahalacha, which Be'ez HaShem tomorrow, Be'ez HaShem, we're going to discuss the Halachas of answering Amen. Zuk the Heilige Zerah Kaddish, Rabbi Yisai. Goyrim lamala kedusha harbe ma'oid v'shefa rav tuv l'chol ha'olamois. Can you imagine what this is? You read the words. Translate that. It causes tremendous bracha, kedusha. It opens up everything. Ki hu paiseach ha-makar ha-elyon mikar mayim chayim. Mabish, it goes on and on and on and on. On the brachas that a person receives in this world for saying the word Amen. How easy is that? You hear a bracha from someone, you hear in shul and you hear chazara sashats, you answer Amen, one after the other after the other. You're opening up the gates of Gan Eden. You're opening up Shefa and Bracha for all of your life. The Minchas Yaakov brings us the words in the parish that we just had. Zokin Bobayomim. That Avram was, was elderly, right? Advanced in years. Zokin Bobayomim. Took the Minchas Yaakov. The same, the, end, the, the, the last letters of the word Zokin Bobayomim is the same letters that spell Amen. That means that the Minchas Yaakov, that when a person answers Amen, also helps him for a long life. And Rabbi Yisrael will end with one last thing, and that is a Moshe from the Heidegger Chovetz Chaim, the Chovetz Chaim says an unbelievable thing. 
And he's talking about specifically the Indian of Amin. And the Chavetz Chaim brings a marshal to understand what it means, the value of answering Amin. Says the Chavetz Chaim, there was a simple farmer. He'd never really been on a train, he's never been to the city, he's never seen what, what city life is all about. Somebody gives him some money and says, do me a favor, I want you to see the city. Go over, go to the train station, buy yourself a ticket and go. So he goes over to the station, he has no idea what he wants, but buy a ticket, what ticket, what train, I've never been on a train before, never seen a train before, heard about the train, but never really seen anything. So he goes to the ticket office and says, I'd like to buy a ticket. So the guy says, okay, sure. Which ticket would you like? Would you like first class? Okay, that sounds good to me. I have no idea what that means, but I guess maybe it means I go on first. So, okay, fine, yeah, sure, no problem. How much is it? Gives him the money that this person gave him, and he gave him a first class ticket. Unbelievable, he's very, very excited. Waiting for the train, it's stamped, it's got a nice gold emblem on it, first class ticket. He's waiting for the train to come, and all of a sudden, the whistle, the train rolls into the station over there, everyone starts running. Now, he follows the people that he recognizes, right? the, the simple people, the farmers, the people wearing similar, similar clothing to him. So he follows them, he doesn't know where to go. He follows them, they go to the back of the train, and they all start going under couches and under the seats, because obviously many of them didn't have tickets to pay. So, they, so he does the same thing. So he goes under one of the seats, and he crouches over there, and he's like hoping everything's going to be okay. This is the train, this is the experience they told me about. No, no. He goes... About 20 minutes later, as the train is going, the conductor comes along collecting all the tickets. Tickets, tickets, and all of a sudden everyone he sees around him are still crouching around, making sure they're not being seen. And the conductor sees this guy, the bit of a little muzzle, he's got his leg sticking out. He kicks him, he says, get up, you, get up, you. So he gets up, and they go, what are you doing over here? He says, what do you, what do you mean? I'm, I'm on the train, I'm, I'm allowed to be here. Where's your ticket? What do you mean? Of course I have a ticket. Takes out a ticket. He shows the conductor a ticket, he looks at him like, one second, he's only got a first class ticket and he's under the chair over there? What's going on over here? He looks at it. he says, this, wait, did you get this? Is this real? He's like, what do you mean? I paid for this myself. He says, you're an idiot, you're a shite, you're a fool. You could have sat in the first class seat, beautiful plush leather geschmacker seat. You're crouching under the back compartment of the train because you don't realize what you have in your pocket. So with the Heidegger Chovetz Chaim, when you have an opportunity to answer or main on a bracha, it is the most unbelievable opportunity as we read the Zoya Kodesh. It opens up the gates of Gan Eden. It's a school for long life. It's a school for Amun and Betoch and Hashem. And all the Marabakim is that we've said. Rabbi Yisai, I hope Be'ez Hashem after today. And B'siyat HaDashmai, tomorrow we'll learn some of the halachas negayed to Amen. But at least let's be mechazik ourselves. 90 Amens a day. You hear a bracha, you answer Amen. Say it b'chol koichai. And Be'ez Hashem, the Rabbi Yisai, will give us all what is promised in Chazal. Gavaldi Ganeidim, B'siyat HaDashmai, Yishkoyach.